Hello everybody, welcome to day seven of my juice fast. I'm playing my favorite, one of my favorite songs, Chill Be Chill. Um, I got my love struck on today on my little hearts, just for fun. Anyway, it's afternoon, it's about four. I usually come out in the morning, but I ended up going to a dance party this morning, a brunch and dance party where I did not eat. I brought a Choco Maca milkshake, had a few sips of that, which is one of my old recipes. It did have a little bit of dates in it. That's the, kind of the only thing that I normally wouldn't have, but my ketones are still at 0.7, which is amazing. So I went, I danced, I shopped for more food, more celery, cucumbers, whatnot, and my turmeric and ginger, which I'm going to show you today. So today I'm going to show you guys how to make a turmeric ginger, what I call milk, M-Y-L-K, um, which instead of juicing the ginger and turmeric, which is, ends up being a super strong concentrate, you make like a whole big milk out of it. So we're going to show you how to do that, and then I'm going to show you how to fillet an aloe leaf and use this in your drinks, like blend it into your juices for super amazing belly soothing uh, toner and also just kind of creams up your juices. And another trick I wanted to show you is what I do is I treat my herbs like flowers. So you put the water in there and then you cilantro and parsley. I just keep that in the fridge till I'm ready to use it in my juices. Today, right now, I'm drinking, I juiced this this morning, I'm drinking, it's not delicious, so I'm not sure if I'm recommending this. I juiced a whole big bok choy, which is really cabbagey tasting and like kind of spicy, almost like a daikon radish uh, with celery, cucumber, I threw a little bit of apple in there, and cilantro, parsley, and lemon. So that's daikon, or not daikon, sorry. Um, we got bok choy, celery, cucumber, lemon, apple, cilantro, parsley. <laughs> I'm still a little spacey. I had a little nap this afternoon, which was really nice, like a 30 minute nap. I'm feeling a lot better. And so I'm coming to you a little later than normal today, and I wanna show you how to make this turmeric ginger juice. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna buy a turmeric root, and these are like 16 bucks a pound, they're not cheap. You could even buy that much if you want. If you're not, like if you're juicing like me, maybe do it a lot, but if you're just wanting to have a little bit of turmeric ginger juice in the fridge, um, I would say, you know, even a little piece is fine. And then the ginger, this is called a hand of ginger, a hand of ginger. Uh, and like a big chunk like this, I'm going to do it all of it just because I'm going to make, I'm going to refill this big jar. I still got the turmeric stains in it. Um, I want to show you this lid as well. I'll show you that to you in a minute after we make the juice. So let's go ahead and make the juice. We're going to start by chopping off any bits of turmeric that don't look beautiful. Um, you know, like just, these are kind of dark looking. None of it looks moldy or bad, so I'm fine with this. And I'm just going to chop it. If you're worried about getting things yellow, then maybe use a special board that uh, doesn't, you don't care about staining. I don't really care about this cutting board. I use it for everything. Again, we're going to cut that end of the ginger off because it looks like a little bit maybe not so fresh. It's all dried out. And then that'll go in the compost. And then you want to chop this like in rings. If you chop it long, well, I guess it doesn't really matter for the juice because we're going to strain it. But normally if you're chopping it like long ways like that for a recipe, you're going to get the threads in there and they don't blend. I mean, they don't, uh, they don't blend and they, they end up in your food if you're not straining it. But we're straining it. So this looks like I've got a pretty big handful. This is at least a cup of ginger. And all together, I can see in my line in my blender, you can see that that's the two cup line there. So we're looking at about a cup and a half of chopped up turmeric and ginger. I'm gonna do, just because I like to have a lot, and this is a four cup jar, I'm gonna put a full four cup. This is my local spring water. I get to collect water at a spring, which makes me so happy. So four cups of spring water or filtered water. And then all you're gonna do, and you can do this with ginger, you can do it with turmeric. Really, uh, I don't know what else you would do it with, but we call it turmeric milk or ginger milk. And here we go, we're gonna blend. Once I 
feel like I've gotten it nice and blended. I'm going to pour it through my amazing nut milk bag. These nut milk bags I created years ago, like 20 years ago, called the Amazing Nut Milk Bag, sold on purejoyplanet.com for all of your juicing and straining needs. And all you do is just squeeze. You don't want that fiber in there, right? If you're making juice, you want the fiber out. And I haven't really covered that. This is day seven. I haven't really covered why, why juicing is better than blending. A lot of people go, well, don't you want the fiber? When you're on a juice fast, you don't want the fiber because you don't want your gut working. You want your gut to rest. And so when you take the fiber out of things, you're immediately, as soon as it goes on your tongue, you're absorbing it in through your whole digestive tract. So you're absorbing, absorbing the nutrients a lot quicker and you're just getting all the fiber out. There's plenty of time for fiber once you reintroduce food, which we'll do when I stop this juice fast. And, uh, you know, normally I eat so much salad and fiber and vegetables. So right now we're taking a total break from fiber and we're just juicing and straining everything. Um, so here we go. I'm going to pour this into my jar. And then I'll have this. This will last me about two weeks. And I add it to all my juices. So this one is my juice I told you about that I don't love. The apple makes it a little bit better. I just added some apple. But I can put a little... So I'm going to use this lid. This is a really fun lid. I don't know where I got it. It says eyelids. And uh, you, it's got like an opening. So this is a great little thing for using with mason jars so that when I'm pouring something, you know, I can just filter it right through there. I've actually been known to like use this for my juice tops and drink out of this as well. So then you add this to your juice. Really just one or two tablespoons, that's plenty. And it'll get too astringent if you add too much. Like it'll just taste too bitter. Because turmeric can be quite bitter. But we know there's tons of benefits to turmeric. Like anti-inflammatory properties. People take turmeric capsules. But if you can get it fresh, why not? The next thing I want to do is show you how to fillet an aloe leaf. I'm going to move our little Mr. Blender out of the way. What I would recommend, too, if you're worried about your blender um, getting yellow, is rinse that right away. Like, don't wait, because uh, it will stain your blender. And that, eventually the stain will come out. But if you rinse it right away, usually you don't get a stain. Okay, so I just bought this fun little organic aloe leaf at the natural grocers. And um, you can grow your own if you live in the desert. I actually am growing some of my own in the house here, but I just bought it because it was easier. I like the way my plants look. Um, okay, so then I'm just going to cut this end off because it's it's got like a bend in it, and this part's not that easy to fillet. So the first thing I do is to stand it on its end and then just cut both sides off, the little prickly sides. And then I might cut this in half just to make it easier. And then, again, filleting just means really thinly slicing the top off. This stuff will be great to use on your skin, especially while you're fasting. Put this on your face, put this on your hands. If you don't want to use it right away, just refrigerate it and then when you're ready, uh, you can use it. And it makes your feel, skin feel a little bit sticky, but it also like, tightens your facial skin. So all that slime on there you can use. And now I'm just going to cut the bottom off. It's so easy, so simple. Again, I talked to you guys about this yesterday, but having a sharp knife is really great because it makes my life so much easier. I just love using sharp knives. I keep my knives fairly sharp too, like I'm always using my knife sharpener on it because once it gets dull, it's hard to sharpen again and then you end up having to take it like someplace and getting them to sharpen it. You could also, if you want, to take time to scrape all this extra gel out. And I always like to use the back of my knife because the front will cut into the green. So just the back of your knife and like scrape. And that's actually quite a bit of gel there I'm getting out. And then I'm just going to use like a little short mason jar, one of these. And um, I got this thing called a bash and chop. I'm showing you guys all my tools here. And see all that? There's so much gel. And I'll just put that right into the jar. Woohoo! And then what I do with these is I cut them into cubes. So like four by 10 or something, four by eight. And then I've got these little squares and I'll put like two squares or three into the blender and blend it when I'm making my juice. 
And then I've got this creamy, frothy juice, and I've got aloe, and my stomach just loves it. Feels so good. So that's how you make your aloe gel. That should last a couple weeks in the fridge as well. I'll go ahead and finish this, but don't have to do that here. So just a little check-in on what's happening on day seven for me. I really felt kind of like quitting last night. Was it last night? Uh, falling asleep, just thinking about food. I think I wanted to have some almonds because I have these soaked and dehydrated almonds. And then, you know, I always, what I do when I'm on a juice fast is just imagine the outcome. Like, oh, you know, tomorrow morning I'm going to wake up. I'm going to be so happy that I'm on day seven and that I didn't quit. And quitting maybe isn't even the right word because I'm like, well, I'll keep juicing. But like once you have some solid food, it really slows down the cleanse. So that could be a good thing because last night, day six, end of day six, my nose started just running clear and it wasn't a cold. I was sneezing. Um, I felt like watery eyes and stuff. But as you can tell today, I don't have a cold. It was just detox. So that's part of the detox as your body starts to drain. I know that sounds kind of gross, but that'll happen to you as you do in a longer fast. When I did my three-month fast, it happened to me for like a week. And it was pretty far in. I think it was like the second month into my fast. And it was just all this, you know, just runny nose constantly for a while. Uh, so don't be alarmed if that happens. You're not sick. And the way you know if you're sick is if you eat something, the runny nose will stop. The, the cold, the cold, what you think is a cold will stop. So isn't that interesting that maybe what colds really are is our body's way of detoxing. So instead of waiting to get sick or waiting to get a cold, waiting to get the flu, waiting to get a virus, just do a cleanse, right? So keep your body clean and running really smoothly. Um, the other thing that happened is today I came home after dancing and I shopped for more ingredients and, you know, my roommates had been cooking and it smelled amazing. It smelled like onions and almost smelled like onion rings. And there was a, I was so tired, so I went and took a nap. I laid in the sun for like 30 minutes, just drank in the sun. So that's another thing you'll notice when you're fasting is you're not really as interested in watching movies or just doing things that aren't that beneficial. Like you want sun, you want nature, you want to hear the birds. Like even music to me, like a lot of music that I normally play is too much energy. Um, there were some kids at the dance party and it was just, I was a little overwhelmed by all the energy. So you do become way more sensitive. But again, I mentioned to you on I think day three or four that um, my meditations are a lot deeper as well. So the sensitivity kind of is part of it. And But you do get more dialed in and you want nature more, you want sunshine, you want quiet, you want silence, you want peace. You want clean smells, so I'm running an ozonator in the house right now just to clear all the smells out and make it smell super fresh. I opened all the doors. So just weird things like that, like you just become sensitive. Sounds are sensitive, smells are sensitive. Um, it's just part of it. So be aware of that if you're gonna fast that you don't wanna be like around a lot of chaos. Like keep yourself protected. You know, Don't go into situations where there's gonna be like loud cars or loud things happening. And then the other thing is today I wanted to eat again too. And I thought, oh, you know, maybe I'll just have something and then I'll go back to fasting and took a nap and I woke up and of course the appetite was gone. Tested my ketones. I'm in ketosis, 0 0.7. 0 0.5 is ketosis in your on your blood ketone meter. meter. So anything over 0.5 means you're in ketosis. So 0.7 is great. I mean, I'm not hugely deeply into ketosis, like a two, but I'm in enough that I'm in fat burning mode. Um, other benefits are like I am noticing, you know, keeping on slimming. I lost another pound today. So I'm up to like eight pounds now for the week. So tomorrow, Monday morning will be a whole full week. Um, so probably nine pounds in a week, which is probably not typical. It's kind of crazy and I'm not overweight. So I don't know why I lost so much weight, but maybe my body was just ready to drop some extra weight. Uh, yeah, COVID weight, whatever. And I hadn't really put on that much weight, but I was just starting to feel a little like my pants are tight. So it's kind of a good reset too. If you just want to do a week reset, pants are getting tight, do a fast. Anyway, I want to encourage you to do any kind of fasting one day, two day, three days. Three days is kind of a typical amount, five days. I'm just going extended. I might do two weeks because tomorrow's start of the second week. So if you want to keep following along with me, I'll keep doing these videos. And I will even do videos once I break the fast so I can kind of share with you how I'm breaking the fast, how I'm feeling. You gotta be really careful about breaking the fast as well. You wanna, for every 
day that you fast, you need a half day of breaking the fast. So if I fast for two weeks, for a week I'm going to be doing blended and you know just light foods and steamed veggies. I'm not going to be like starting to like just go back to my old diet. So anyway, see you guys tomorrow on day eight, and thanks for tuning in. And remember to check us out on PureJoyPlanet.com. If you're watching us on Facebook, you can also follow me at on YouTube at PureJoyPlanet. And make sure you give us a like and subscribe.